I'll be woke up, y'all so stuck in they We got next on this next and this is a bit of deal and I'm with the two. Long to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, those that are near and those that are far off. Follow those that got a chance to watch the uh, the video yesterday with me and the, the young Calvinist dude. In my eyes, he got exactly what he deserved. Now let me explain to y'all what happened and why it took a turn in the way it did. 
We'll serve notice on all of our brothers because those brothers, those Israelite brothers that are in gross darkness. Okay, yeah, I'm just about to address that. Those of our brothers that are in gross darkness, they do not understand they're in gross darkness. They sincerely believe that what they have is worth defending. However, we that understand we are the children of the Bible and the scripture was given to us. It belongs to us. We know how to interpret it correctly. So, I have two pieces of paper right here. These two pieces of paper, I had them before the video ever started. And if you notice, I'm going to see if you can see this right here. See if y'all can see this. Can y'all can y'all see this? Can y'all see what that say? It says 2 Peter 3rd chapter 15th verse. That was the first scripture on my list. You know why? Because I've dealt with these people many times before. All of our brothers that are in the religious constructs, the, the different branches of Christianity, I know where they're going. I know what they're going to do. I know what they attempted to do. So before they even come on, I already know what you're getting ready to do. So what you're about to do is you're about to use the letters of Paul as a deity and allow them to supersede the words of Scripture. And that ain't going to happen. Not on my watch. And so my objective is, because I know where he was going, my objective was to destroy the credibility of Paul as a deity, not destroy the credibility of Paul as a beloved brother that's walking amongst the family of Israel just like one of us. He was a beloved brother. He was a, bro a beloved brother that you would be able to go and talk to on the phone. He was a beloved brother. He was no type of God type of figure as they try to use him. So anytime anybody think that they're going to use Paul as some type of deity to supersede scripture, then guess what? The father have equipped us with an understanding of the word to where we can keep Paul in his rightful place. All right. And so when he seen I was going to take Paul away from him right out the gate. That's why the thing didn't go that far. Because, I mean, what can you use if I didn't took it from you? So, many of you brothers and sisters out there, based on some of the comments that I've seen, you still don't have a full comprehension of what's being said. So, here it is. When we start dealing with Paul, our beloved brother, who some call the Apostle Paul, okay, that lets you know that there's a twofold nature when it comes to dealing with Paul. Those that see Paul as a beloved brother understand that Paul was given a special type of wisdom to write. They would be cohesive with the law and the prophets, yet at the same time, they would trip up those that classify as Paul as an apostle. They would, they would look at Paul as though it was some type of deity. And based on which set of eyes you're looking through is, is going to determine what the outcome is going to be. Because if you try to use Paul to supersede the words of the Messiah, then we're going to pull out the manhood of Paul and show you that he wasn't perfect. Some things were a mistake. Some things it may, may have been a lie about. If you, if you make a mistake, that could be classified as a lie. But everything that we got contained in the scripture concerning our brother is not to destroy destroy him, but is to take him out of the place where you can't use him as no type of deity to supersede the father's word. And because our brother understood that because he was a smart Calvinist, he played himself like he was some little dumbling, but he wasn't no dumbling. He had orders from Satan to go over there and try to confuse the onlookers because he wasn't going to confuse me. Now, he may piss me off because there's a fine line that runs between me being a man of God and me being a man, and I don't have time to play. And so if you're going to come to me, then you're going to come to me as a man with a genuine heart and a genuine spirit because that's what I'm going to give. But if you come to me trying to play games, I'll put the Bible down and grab you in the throat because my time is too valuable and the word of the Most High is too important to sit around arguing with anybody. So... I want to show some of y'all the same things that we was going to show that brother. 
Because when I told him that to be classified as an apostle, you had to be one that walked with Jesus from the time that he was baptized in the Jordan River. You had to be one that had walked with Jesus in and out every place that he went while he did his miracles. You had to be one that was exposed to its teachings. And at last it said, you must, you must be one that is an ordained witness of the resurrection. And none of these things Paul met up with. So the young Calvinist said, well, Paul seen Jesus. And I said, well, show it to me in the scripture. And because I knew where he was going, because I knew where he was going, is right here on this page right here. Because I knew where he was going to go. And I know you're going to go to the conversion account and try to use what Paul said that uh, he seen. Because Paul never seen Jesus. He never seen him. Now, when he got an idea and understood, I knew where he was going and told him instead of getting the ninth chapter, you get ninth chapter, 22nd chapter, and 26th chapter, and we're going to see if what Paul said he's seen remains the same and the same thing is spoken in the mouth of two or three witnesses like the Messiah said. It cannot be spoken in the mouth of the same person. So that's what we was going to do. We was going to look at that. And we don't care about what nobody thinks because when you learn by heathens, let's look at how heathens operate. Anybody that knows black folks are not like white folks in our thought process. We don't think like them. We don't operate like them. We don't raise our children like them. They'll let their children run all over the place, knock over stuff in the grocery store and everything, cuss them out and, and pull away from them. Some of them even hit them. But... That might not dare happen to one of our children. You ain't going to run all over the grocery store. You ain't going to knock nothing over. You ain't going to do nothing that we tell you not to do. Otherwise, you're going to get your butt whooped. That's how we operate as a people. And we just operate differently. Now, when, when take us as a people. We are not. We are the righteousness of this earth. We are not no liars that hide behind walls, that throw rocks and hide our hands. If you piss me off, you're going to suffer the consequences the moment you piss me off. But see, they don't operate like that because they don't operate like that and try to get pissed off. They try to keep a straight face and a smile, but they'll be sticking you the whole time and nobody else can see them sticking you the whole time. But what they do see is you might not see him stick me with the knife, but I don't care if you see me when I knock his teeth out. Because I knock his teeth out, he know why his teeth get knocked out, and the most high know why his teeth get knocked out. And contrary to what the onlookers might think, oh, well, why is Elder getting angry? Why is Elder getting angry? Elder gets angry because Elder is too much man to play with anybody, especially when I'm dealing with the word. It's a righteous indignation that'll break out in me that'll make you understand. I'm not tolerating no foolishness. Either we're going to deal with this scripture or we ain't. We got too many weak, timid, pussy foot sissy five men out here that think that they got to operate like everybody else operate but our God is a God of war and when he goes through the earth the earth shakes things start happening and that's what's happening right now these things that's happening right now in the nation of Israel they're not happening at the hands of no timid sissy five men that are scared to speak what thus said the Lord God to anybody they're not you see the world is shaking because of men like that that's out here proclaiming these things to the heathens to the ones that had the power to kill you we're going to proclaim that to the ones that declared we was haters or anti-semites we will be the ones to proclaim that the so-called jews are the diabolical savages and the destroyers of this earth and we got a lot of brothers out here that's in the scripture that you don't want to say nothing based on who the people that you are around but if I'm representing the word of God and standing on what thus said the most high, you let the devil come with all of his full forces. I would rather die and go be with the most high standing on his word than to close my mouth when the time I have an opportunity to speak. So we're going to show some of you today what that young slithering snake of fire young Calvinist couldn't take that he ran in every different direction so that that wouldn't be exposed. He didn't know who he was dealing with. And we serve notice on our brothers in gross darkness that if you ever come and you try to use the letters of our beloved brother to supersede the words of Hamashiach and the law and our beloved prophets, then you are in trouble.
So we started them with Peter's warning. Now, one of the things that the Messiah said, he said, every thought must be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. This, brothers and sisters, mean that if you're going to make a statement, you got to be able to support that statement in two or three different places out of the mouth of two or three different people. Now, check this here out, because Jesus said himself, he said, even in your court system, you have to have two or three witnesses in order to convict the person. But each time they put a witness on the witness stand, when he put Paul out there last night to be his witness, then I, as the other prosecutor over here, I had a right to cross-examine Paul. So we're going to attack his credibility and see if he is the witness that you can use for the case that you are trying to represent. And you couldn't use Paul to represent that case right there. Now, that's what that is. You can't use that. And I have a right to cross-examine anybody. And while you try to put words in my mouth, you can't put no words in my mouth because I'm trying to get you to open up the book and see the words for yourself. And let's see if you come back and call him a liar. So let's go to right there where he ran from, where he knew he was not going to be able to use anything from the writings of Paul to defend his argument. So let's look at this. Somebody put these scriptures on the screen because we didn't get there. Put Acts 9th chapter, 7th verse. Acts 9th chapter, 7th verse. These are the three conversion accounts. And keep this in mind. Every thought had to be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses in order for their, uh, their, their statements to be corroborated and substantiated. Acts 22nd chapter and 9th verse. I need somebody to put these scriptures out there. Acts 9 and 7, Acts 22 and 9, and Acts 26, chapter, verse 14. This is Paul's conversion account. In the ninth chapter, Paul says, I was kept with a blinding light and I was knocked to the ground. And I heard somebody say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who is this? He Saul said, this is Jesus. He never seen him. He heard it. He never seen him. He said he heard it. But let's go. He said, at the end of the day, he said, the men, the men that were with me, they stood there speechless. They heard a voice, but they didn't see no light. That's the first account. The men that would corroborate his story, they were with him. They stood speechless. They heard a voice, but they didn't see no light. So when we get to Acts 22nd chapter in the ninth verse, it says, the men that were with me, they seen the light, but they didn't hear no man. You see, them two right there are completely different. The first one, they heard a voice and they didn't see no light. The second one, they seen a light, but they didn't hear no voice. And then when we go to Acts 26 and verse 14, it says, when we had all fallen to the ground. Now, instead of him being knocked to the ground, all of them done fall into the ground. And he heard, and he heard in the Hebrew. Now, everything is changing. Instead of him knocking to the ground when he seen a light, now... All of them done fell to the ground when they seen the light. But in the first account, they didn't see no light. So if they didn't see no light, why would they be falling to the ground? In 26, all of them seen the light and all of them was knocked to the ground. And then Paul heard Jesus speaking in the Hebrew tongue. And that wasn't in the first account, that wasn't in the second account, and it's in the third account. And not only did Paul hear him speaking in the Hebrew tongue, he also added to it and said now he was the proclaimed apostle to the Gentiles. 
When Jesus didn't appoint Paul to be no apostle to no Gentiles because God let the sheet down unto, unto, unto Peter in the 10th chapter of Acts and told Peter, rise, kill, and eat. Why Peter said, I have never eaten anything uh, common or unclean. And God told him, don't call that common or unclean that I have cleansed and sent Peter to the Gentile Cornelius. It was the first open door. Keep Peter was the appointed apostle to go to the Gentiles. All of these things. And these things are not in here so that we can destroy Paul as a beloved brother. They are in there so that anytime anybody try to use Paul as a deity to supersede the words of the Messiah and the law and the prophets, then we have these evidences in here that we can now cross-examine Paul and, and attack his credibility so you will know not to put him on the stand in that manner. And that slick, sliver, and sly, wicked piece of a Satan seed, he knew very well what was about to happen. He wasn't expecting it, but he knew it. And I knew by way of the spirit what he was going to do long before he came because this is the scriptures that the most high had me to write down on paper long before I ever got the phone call. I knew where he was coming from. I knew what he was going to try to use and I was ready for him when he drove up. And yeah, it pissed me off. Because from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom have suffered violence. But the violent will take it by force. You're not going to come up in here and try to assault the words of my king. You're not going to assault the words of my beloved brother, the prophets, who were dear to the most high. And you're not going to take one of our own beloved brothers and use him against another. It's a woe on them that caused division amongst the brothers. You look at how these religious constructs have caused division amongst the brothers by using our beloved brother Paul against the Messiah and against the law and against the prophets. And it saddens me to see that even our young brothers in Israel that are without that knowledge and understanding don't give no heed. There is a reason why Israel has elders. It don't make no difference whether you understand it now or not. You have elders for a reason, because we have been places that you ain't never been. We have seen things that you are yet to see, and we have endured things that you probably would have died if you was in that situation. And so sometimes it'll do you some good to close your mouth and stop typing on a keyboard while somebody's talking and just listen to what's being said. You see? Now, when you start talking about, when you start talking about Calvinism is hellborn, it's wicked, and it didn't come into 1,500 years later after the Messiah. It is one of the last and latest branches of Christianity. How could that have any type of impact when if you go all the way back in time, Christianity itself doesn't have anything to do with the scriptures because it was the Israelites, Barnabas, who went and found Paul that went to Antioch and they were Israelites and Paul declared that I am an Israelite also of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. He said that Barnabas and Paul, the Israelites, were first and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. But Christians is not a term that was born in Antioch. It was a term that was born in Rome. And that means they had never been to Rome before, yet the word Christian already existed. And it was a people that was already named Christian that was there. It is a form of replacement theology that seeks to destroy the children of Israel and blot their name out from the historical books by trying to put, why are you going to call me an Israelite a Christian? You tell me. That's right. Y'all got them. Acts 9 and 7. Acts 22 and 9. Acts 26 and verse 14. Read them for yourself. Because if you, you got to know how to keep Paul in his right place if he's going to become a benefit to you. You can't take Paul and climb over the one that Paul loved. The one that Paul laid his life down for. 
The one that Paul was three times beaten with 40 strikes. One time left for dead. Three times shipwrecked. Paul had went through more persecution than any other other disciples for what he, for his love that was born out of the Messiah. How do you think you can now take him and use him against the Messiah? And then let's go here. Let's go here to you so-called Christians or you brothers that call yourself Christians. Let's go here. When we ask you what the word Christian means, what we get back is it means Christ-like. That means that you're like Christ. Okay, well, take this for instance. Christ said, I and my father are one. You think that that means that Christ is God, but it doesn't. Because he backed it up in Hebrews by saying, I am the express. Christ is the express image of the invisible God's righteousness. So him and his father are one in the idea that he is the father's express image of the invisible visible God's righteousness that men had not yet seen, which he came to be an example of. But God said, I will not share my glory with anyone. If Christ, if you're Christian mean Christ-like and you should be doing what Christ did, why don't you listen to the words that Christ said? How do you want to go and use Paul all the time and start be talking about what Christ did? Why don't you use what Christ did since you said that's the one that died for you? That's the one that justified you? That's the one that gave you grace? Why do you want to do what he did? Use his words. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Because it's time out for nonsense, people. It's almost time to get up and get out of these places. And we don't have time to be messing with no meaningless arguments. That's why I'm not even fooling with these dudes anymore. My brothers in gross darkness, they can have somebody else's responsibility now. It's somebody else, because when I come, I'm going to come with a genuine spirit, and I'm going to be genuinely seeking to do good. But I'm genuinely seeking to do good, and you already know that you got a preconceived notion that you just coming for nonsense. I'm not even wasting my time with that anymore. The rest of our younger brothers that's zealous about fighting and war, they can have that type of stuff. My focus is on how do we get our people prepared to get out of this place before all of this hell break loose. We see what's happening. It'll only be a matter of time. See, the Christians are not the ones that's going to go up under the persecution that's considered Jacob's trouble. The Christians are the ones that's going to be bringing the persecution against Jacob. And these are what you're witnessing is the first fruits of that. Because what they thought at first was that Israel wasn't going to get his name back. Israel, they really ain't woke. Us Christians, we still God's people. Israel ain't really woke. But now they're starting to take a second look because the Most High is moving through the earth by his spirit and by his power and he is causing everything to be shooken up so where they wasn't paying Israel the Israelites no attention at first now your biggest name preachers your TD Jakes's your Creflo Dollars all of your big name establishments now they can't even get up on Sunday morning and preach a sermon without having Israel in their mouth those black Hebrew Israelites out there that we wasn't paying attention to they're the ones that's responsible for our membership decline they are the reason why our people ain't bringing no money and bringing no tithes back because Israel understands now that the well, the fall of Israel is the riches of the Gentiles and as long as they kept us diminished. They would maintain their riches. But as we qualm Yasharala and rise up out of our stupor, we come and take our book back, our understanding back. Give me my money back. And when I take all of the things that's rightfully mine back from you, there is no way in the world that your religious construct can stand. And this is what's happening. And so now they know that they can't got no defense. So they'll come out to woodwork. And now they start coming to where we at to bother me. Will you come on over here? If if you want to. You come on over here because we got some young kings that's going to tear your kingdom down. Ain't nothing that you can do about it. So, y'all know how I am. I'm excited about what I do. I don't know about nobody else, but when the most high wake me up in the morning, breathe breath in my nostrils, get food in my icebox, put clothes on my back. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go and do whatever he tell me to do. I can't speak for nobody else. I can't speak for nobody else that got everything that the Father done for you. But you can't praise him. You ain't got no excitement. You ain't got no zeal about nothing. That ain't me. That ain't me. That ain't me. 
And when I'm going to go to do the work, I'm going to pour into it everything that I got. And when I walk away from these cameras, sometimes I'll be so beat down and so tired from pouring out what the Father gave me to his people. Because that's what he called us to do. Love your brothers. Love your sisters enough to go out there and lay your life down for them. Go out there. Take whatever assault that you got to take. Go out there. Get slandered. Get slandered. Get beat down. Even get crucified for doing the work on behalf of your brothers and sisters. That is what we feel in here. So that we don't mind coming on here with excitement. We don't mind letting tears fall out of our eyes when we are passionate about what we're talking about. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He's going to give us back everything that he stole. And every heathen, every heathen that stands in Israel's way is going to be destroyed. And we serve notice on them today. So you go and take that back. Facebook, why you watching? YouTube, why you watching? The CIA, the FBI, that call us black identity. You take all of that back and you go share it with your people so that they'll know what's coming in that direction. Because it ain't no turning away. Ain't no turning away. The Hebrews is coming. And it ain't nothing that nobody can do about it. We coming. We want our money back. You're going to play up for slavery. You're going to pay up for every single thing that you ever done. You're going to pay up for the murder of our children in the street. You're going to pay up for our people that's on welfare, that's on food stamps, that's on Section 8, that's in the project. You want to pay up for every last crime that you ever committed against the Father's people. And you go and run and tell that because the Father's people don't have no problem with laying their life down for what they believe. I'd rather die on a battlefield as a soldier than to live in this wicked world and be classified as a coward. Hallelujah. 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 Elder, tone down a little bit. Just tone down a little bit. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep No, you keep calm. This ain't no time for being calm. People need to know that we are serious about what it is that we believe. If you ain't come to believe it yet, sit down somewhere. Let the real men of God out front to do the work. So basically, in closing this video out, we got brothers that are confused, okay? We got brothers that are confused. Paul is our beloved brother. He is not a deity. If you try and use Paul as a deity to go against the scriptures, which are the things that come from the mouth of the disciples, because they were witnesses of the things that Christ done, both done and Say it. The word of God is the things that came from the mouth of Hamashiach because he spoke not his own words. He only spoke what the father gave him. And the things that come through the mouth of the prophets, according to Hebrews 1, God who has sundry times in diverse manners, he spoke unto the fathers by the prophets. And the law of Moses because God spoke to Moses face to face and told Moses what to tell the children of Israel. Those people right there are classified as the word of God. When Paul started dealing with the people on the outside, he wrote those letters based on his understanding of the law and the prophet. And he wrote in such a way that only those that truly had a sincere desire to leave everything in their culture and take on the full weight of the heritage of Israel, they are the only ones that will have a right to enter. That is why Paul 
wrote his letters. He wrote his letters to a people that were separated from the commonwealth of Israel. That meant that they had no law to live by. They had no standard to live by. But God gave him a special type of wisdom to write. That, that, that wisdom in those writings would test the very thing that was in a man's heart. This is why your Calvinists, your Baptists, your Methodists, your Presbyterian, your Pentecost, your AMEs, your all of them different alphabet letters of your churches. This is why they are going into, they're going to Paris. Because they are the ones the Messiah will be talking about. Boasting. Did not we preach? Did not we preach in your name? Did not we lay on hands in your name? Cast out devils? Did not we do many one? He said, get away from me. I don't know you. I don't know you. Because you allowed the wisdom I gave my beloved servant Paul. You allowed that wisdom that I gave him to trick you. And you did away with my law. Therefore, I must tell you to depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Because iniquity means lawlessness. Ye lawless ones, depart from me. And they genuinely think that they have a part. But Satan have deceived them. And the sad thing about it is that our brothers and our brothers and the seed of Israel is mixed up and mingled in there. What a sad thing it is and how it breaks your heart. You will get angry too when you understand that this is your brother that's mixed up in here and mingled in here with this. And all you want to do is get him out. And he want to defend the very thing that's seeking to kill you. So in essence, what he's doing is committing his own suicide. Bow. So we're going to understand something. Let's understand it for what it is. Shalom.